What's up, those boys fans? My name is Nathan. What's up, guys? My name is Zach. Um, we are a podcast um, where we talk about our religious trauma. Yes, our religious trauma growing up in the Calvary Chapel Christianity Church. Which we've talked about a lot that maybe you watching this right now, finding us, for this is the first time you've seen us on episode 36. Maybe you too have religious trauma, but you're not a Christian because this crosses a lot of levels. Crosses. Crosses. A lot of levels. Yeah, we like to do that. We like to use um, the uh, symbols of our past uh, for our benefit today. Yes. It is a uh, Sunday afternoon for us here. We have the garage door open because it is like 75, 80 degrees oh, today. It's beautiful. Yeah. It is a hell of a lot easier to podcast in a warm day than in a freezing day. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're curious what it was like for us podcasting when it was colder, just go back a few episodes yeah. and check it. Yeah. Just a couple it was months like three ago. weeks ago. Yeah. There was one episode. Uh, the last episode Chantel was here because we got Chantel in the building. Yeah, like, we got Chantel back in our graphic design, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Chantel Bogue. Uh, C Bogue design. Last, <laughs> last time she was here, uh, we all had the coldest podcast we've done to the point of halfway through, I was getting legit angry at how cold I was. And and uh, right when it ended, we all went home. Yeah. I don't think we said many words. I was like, I'm done with this. We, 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 we've been improving, though. They're like, right now, I'm looking at that heater that kind of helped you a little bit. Yeah. No, that was amazing. I'm thinking that if we, we're not going to be in this garage, hopefully, this winter coming, we're going to hopefully have our own studio, right? We will have our own studio. Okay. Just I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Just put that into the universe, yeah. right? We are going to have a studio outside of the garage. Before next winter. Before next winter. Yeah. Um, but if we don't. No, we will. No, because it's always good to have possibilities. Because <laughs> I'm going to put another heater yeah, there. Yeah, I was going to say, we just need one more heater. So we can have like yeah. little heaters. Um, but we have the sun. We do. And um, we're sun worshipers. See, I'm interested to see how hot it's going to get. Yeah. Well, you know, last <laughs> summer it got... Uh, 116. 116. Yeah. We, I remember me and Megan were in the house. We looked outside and we were visibly watching flowers dying. <laughs> yeah. Because it got like the hottest it got for like an hour. It was like... 119, I think it got up to. And it was like, oh, is this what climate change is going to be? Yeah. And in Arizona, it was like 130. Yeah. It's just insane. Um, but we've had a really good winter. I mean, we've got a ton of rain. Yeah. Like way more rain like than ever. Than ever. Than at least well, in my since, life in California. So this is what I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when we were kids? I do. And we would like surf the gutters. Yeah. When we first moved here. Yeah. yeah it was like you would literally like run full speed and you would like body slide the yeah. gutters because it would just be like a river. Yeah. And then uh, when we lived in our last place we lived, which was um, it would flood. Yeah. And there'd be people like kayaking. Yeah down the street you'd be like it was oh, just for like, the first about oh, three hi. years though that we, we moved here yeah, it was the first three years, change. and then it just didn't we didn't have that many wet winters but yeah. now we just had such a wet winter that i'm like maybe we're going back towards mm. actually getting rain no there was some winters dude where it would rain for four days no this last winter it rained what for like three months straight um i'm sorry to break it to you yeah it's not looking like this is going to be like a common thing how do you say that right how do you know uh, climate change. Yeah, but isn't that what why this is happening is because of climate change? What? We isn't, get we get an unprecedented amount of rains like every so many years, no matter what. It's just like part of the way it works. I know, but it was twenty years ago since we've had this much rain. If I were you, I would just start preparing for things to always get hotter and warmer, less water. Okay, so let's just move. Where do oh oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, because yeah. we have the privilege just to move away from it. No, we're in California. This is a, we're in a great place. I mean, we are very lucky to be here. There are, most of the places suffering the most are not gonna be like where we live. Yeah. I mean, but the amount of fires, like everything is going, that's pre, I mean, that's like that was six years of fires. Like come yeah. On. yeah. I mean, it's still very much. But a to be honest, I don't really know too much of like the logistics behind like the science behind science, uh, climate change. I just know that when when I hear people like working at, at, in the hospital, they're like, wow, maybe this is the start of a really nice wet winters and in, in, in not so bad summers. It's like, oh, no, I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to be. I, guess I, don't, I don't think just have to wait and see. I know you're happy, but I don't think that's how this works. <laughs> I don't know, man. We'll have to wait and see. I guess we don't know until we We're know. We're going to be wetter on our bodies from the heat than we are going to be from the rain. Let me tell you that. Yeah. hundred um, percent. Thank you for being here, Chantel. Yeah. Thanks for being here, so, Chantel. Uh, Chantel, is, uh, she had finished our website. <laughs> so do us a favor after you're done watching this whole entire podcast or listening wherever you are um, and go ahead and go to www.com. Those boys podcast. Podcast. Dot com. Com. Those boys podcast dot com. We have like four different names for different <laughs> things. We're gonna try to make all of that like one name. But yeah. It's beautiful. Um 
very excited to have a uh, sort of like home base platform online for all of our, you can watch all of our episodes there. Um, and soon you're even going to find merch because Chantel is starting to yeah. work on merch. That was the goal is the goal is the podcast and then business cards, which we're ordering tonight. Yes, we are ordering business and cards And then uh, merch and merch is exciting. It's, it's funny that like, you were like, yeah, I can't believe we're all, we're actually on episode 36. And it's like, well, if you don't stop, you actually start making some progress. Yeah. You know, <laughs> slowly things start to fall into place. It's totally, nice. totally. I would think after you do it for this long, things start to fall into place. Yeah. Because well, we've been doing it for a minute, man. We, uh, I think we've already passed the half year point. I think the half year point. Really? Well, how many weeks are in a year? <laughs> I don't know. 54, four, four, right? 52? Four weeks. Four five, weeks in five, a year? Five weeks? Okay, you're doing great. I love math. <laughs> Uh, I think it's 54 or 52 weeks in a year, somewhere around there. That's what I said. I said 54. Yeah, that's what you said. Did you, did you think I said four? So that means, let's just see how good your math is. What's 52 divided by two? Uh, 25. 0.5. 0.875. 62? It's 56. I don't, you, 20, you were thinking 20, this whole time. It's 22. <laughs> Why no, do you do this to me? It's 26. So we've, on I episode, am a registered on, nurse. I don't do math. On episode 26, we hit the half year point. And so we're on episode 36. So we're like well past that half year point. It feels like we're way past that half yeah. year point. Yeah. I was thinking the first few episodes we did was in my living room and then the family room in front of the fireplace. That was a long time ago. Oh, yeah. That was a minute ago, dude. Um, Chantel, though, came up with a great idea before we started. She was saying we got to do something for episode 50. Yeah. And uh, that's going to come right around the corner. And episode 50 might be closer to like Christmas, right? Or like Thanksgiving? No. Because it's what, 14 episodes away? 14 weeks from now. So that's four, eight, 12, about a, three, three and a half months from now. Yeah. So, so we're in I April. Just, so half a month till May, May, June, July. She's talking July. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. So then we're going to have a little summer party in yeah. July. I think we should have like a fun little like party cast. Maybe have some more people in here. Maybe like a pool party on camera live. You should get, we should get like a little floaty pool. In the garage yeah, right like by the little Pelotons. One. Yeah. We lovely. won't ruin anything. Work out and swim. Yeah. It's exciting. But we should definitely make it fun because I always reminisce back to the Halloween podcast where we dressed up and it was just a really fun podcast. No, I think it'd be fun to have a those boys party that would an invite and like, it's a, you know, like we DJing it and it's just like fun. It'd be fun. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I'm just going to take the elephant that's in the room, just going to put it right on the center of the table. What's and we're, and we're just going to talk about What's the that elephant? elephant. This is the first podcast we're ever doing where you're not stoned. <laughs> <laughs> now, now the second question you're going to ask me. How you feeling? How you doing? I feel like shit. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I hate my life. <laughs> take me back. Yeah. Um, this is day seven, and who's counting? You okay, are. It's day seven, two hours and 45 minutes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, we've talked a lot about marijuana on this podcast. We've talked yeah. a lot about plant medicine. We've talked a lot about psychedelics, and we continue to, and we will continue to. Yeah. Because we believe in that medicine. We do. And it helps, and it works. Um, but yeah, I've been an avid uh, you know, cannabis user pretty much on since I was about 17 years old, and took a year off for nursing school. And it's legal in California, recreational. So it's like very different now than when I started. I had like three medical marijuana cards mm -hmm. when I first started smoking um, for like glaucoma. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was a, it specifically was for uh, shoulder pain. Yeah. That's what I used as what I, how I got my first one. And then insomnia was a lot, the next two because that's the real reason The why shoulder I pain after sh breaking it with yeah. snowboarding. Yeah. yeah. Collarbone. Yeah. And yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm going on a journey in a week uh, to do some other type of plant medicine that is uh, requires an immense amount of cleansing. Mm. And so there has been no processed foods, um, no added carbohydrates, no added salt um, for about a month now. Um, or I guess like uh, the strictest I've been on is about a week and a half, but literally no processed or anything, only fresh veggies. And I'm only eating like chicken and fish. Um uh, and that's been like about a month. And so that has been excruciatingly hard, but it's getting, you're just getting more and more used to it. And then I took a marijuana out about a week ago. And so this will be the first cast mm. of me feeling, um, all of me, which I don't even know if I'm feeling all of me. Sometimes I, I wake up some days and I'm like, 
I'm pretty sure I'm stoned all day today because <laughs> I'm like so used to being yeah. stoned that I don't like maybe I wasn't getting as high as I thought I was. I'd like get stoned for like 10 minutes and then I'd just be coasting off that little bit of buzz. Yeah. And so sometimes I feel exactly the same. And in fact, most of the time I feel pretty much the same. But here's what's different. And here's what's hard <laughs> is I am feeling a lot more mm. of my body. What does that mean? My anxieties, mm. my fears my insecurities. You know, the work I've done over the last two years with my fiance um, on my own has been so powerful and so enlightening, like quitting alcohol. It's almost a year and a half now. Um, and I've just had so much growth, so much power over my angers and my insecurities. Um, I've really started to love and accept myself in ways that I, I guess I wasn't doing as efficiently for a long time. And now that I've taken out the medicine that I was really crutching on forever, um, at times I felt like I'm just backtracked back to an old set of insecurities, um, angers, reactiveness. And it's almost like I have to not relearn. I just have to be really, really, really present in the fact that I've been using a medicine that has worked fl- like very well for me and has like I've been conditioned to like deal with certain anxieties and fears with marijuana, but I haven't been so conditioned to do that without it. Mm. And so this last week has been a a stepping stone into a new way of dealing with my feelings Mm. and my emotions. And so um, it's been rather intense some days, other days it's been like really wonderful, like Mm. really enjoying the freedom of like going to work and then coming home from work and not, doing any of that like not need there's just not like the need to get high it's just like that i don't do that anymore right now mm. and there's there's a freedom there there's so much like then this is what it is right we've talked about this so much like well i guess that's it mm-hmm. and now it's like oh this is what it is mm. it used to be well that's it no more caffeine well mm. this is it and now it's like ah this is actually what it is and so when i'm in that headspace mm, i am this is so we do. Mm. It's great. Some days it's, I don't want to be in my state of mind anymore. <laughs> I just want to be high. So I don't like anything or me or anyone. So I'd rather just, just smoke weed, weed because this is stupid, 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 stupid. Why would anybody want to be in their head without marijuana? <laughs> That's the song. Yeah, that's, that's what I've been singing every it single day. Feels like the anxiety you probably feel. That's exactly when I, when I wake up some days, yeah. and it's like, I guess that's it. It's not. It's this isn't fun. <laughs> I don't want to be like this, and it feels like I love that. it. Love yeah. it. It's not. It's yeah. not love. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have to. Um, I'll, I'll say this. I'm meditating, and I did yoga for an hour this morning. We are doing <laughs> things differently to manage my life dude it reminds me of forgetting sarah marshall you know when he's sober and he's like i do i do uh, i do yoga for like four hours every morning i'm feel great i feel perfect oh yeah <laughs> all the snow yeah, yeah he's like rob do yoga for like four years you see these lines right here yeah he's like for my sins oh it's funny man well i think you're doing great and thank uh, you. i'm excited for your journey that you're about to go on and to hear about it thank you um you tell me, because we're brothers, we talk every day, um, and we are we really have such a wonderful relationship and support each other a lot in our lives that uh, how to, I'm just going to be vulnerable here, how do I feel to you as your brother? Uh, you're definitely coming off weak. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> you're definitely a little tenser. Is tense, is that a bad thing? Or no, like, no, no, What no, do you feel? Um, so, I mean, everyone's different when they're high. Yeah. And like we talked about, I think it was two podcasts ago, that when we feel angry, and I made a joke out of it, but it's true. When I feel angry, if I smoke weed, um, I just think about my anger differently. And I just react to things differently. It's slower and more of like a third person's perspective instead of just in my head and my ego. Mm. And so when you take weed out, um, that ego can start to get really heavy. And the intensity or the tenseness is more of, of you've been present for a week now and you haven't got out of your head probably for a week now and you don't even have caffeine. You don't even have these things. And so you're just very present in like a little tense, but it's tense isn't a bad thing. The tense yeah. is present, dude. That's exactly how it feels. I woke up this morning and, be, and I didn't have any breakfast till 11 because mm. I wanted to read for an hour and do yoga for an hour. And I was so content given my diet is like, I was really hungry for a month and I'm just not that hungry yeah. anymore. You're just eating grass. Because when you quit weed, 
after smoking it and using it for like 15 years, your body goes, I'm not hungry anymore. I'm not hungry anymore. <laughs> But I am because of like the diet too. Like yeah. I'm not as like, I'm not getting all those like chips and things that I was eating. Or so sugar like, rushes or right. anything. Yeah. So now when I get hungry, it's like I have an apple and I'm like, this is the greatest apple I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I feel better. So there's just a simplicity of my life now that is wonderful. Mm-hmm. I feel so free. Honestly, like better. I've felt better in some regards than I think I have ever. And um, I love the way my body feels. I love the way my body looks. Mm. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to show you right now. But I have like a six pack without even having to do anything. We'll take pictures right after this and we'll put it on the cast for you. <laughs> it's to true. See. Like all that water weights, like we all have abs under us. I mean, yeah. When you take out the bad foods and the poison, it's you're going to feel a little better. Yeah. Um, but like I haven't cut my hair in over, like I have the longest hair I've had in so long. Yeah. And so I feel pretty shaggy. Mm. And uh, yeah, I just, I'm um, just living. And um I've had a tougher, I'll be honest, I've had a, I have had a tougher weekend. Megan left for a week. She's in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, uh, doing conferences and presentations for her dissertation. <gasps> wow. Ooh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so that's, that's why I'm marrying her, whatever. <laughs> uh, and so I'm here taking care of the pets and the kid. And um, uh, you know, Megan, bless you, you're amazing. And so, but you know, it's like weird when your partner leaves and you've also removed everything that made you feel safe. Yeah. Then like the door closes when you get back from the airport and it's like, hello, <laughs> is that you, Nathan, in your thoughts? And yeah. it just, just, and then I don't have my partner here. Yeah. So I'm just going through the, like the, the gamut of thoughts. And some rumination has been tough this weekend. I gardened for six hours yesterday and told, like, I wanted to not put headphones on because I just wanted to be present mm. in my the, the sounds of the earth, the heartbeats around the garden and a feeling. And, and I love that, but I also have removed YouTube and other things on my phone and Reddit. So I haven't used YouTube or opened up. Like these are things that I've used every day after work yeah. to like, I didn't even know how much anxiety was being curbed by me watching the podcast I listen to every day after work. Mm. So every day after work last week, I'd hop in my car and I'd be like, <gasps> Like, it was so weird to, like, just be driving without listening to, like, the news yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And so, I've been listening to a lot of electric guitar jazz. Mm. Like, the stuff you yeah. play. Yeah. And, like, I was just thinking, man, you should just write an album of your electric guitar shit. I would listen to that all day. Yeah. There's something about, like, smooth reverb electric guitar, like, out in the garden. Like, bow, 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 and you put your hand in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so comforting. So, I... Wasn't able to be like in my own head while gardening. So I just played jazz and like edited James and all these electric guitar songs in my head for like six hours and just like really went inward. Mm. But it was interesting. I couldn't go all the way inward because I was being distracted by my music. And so uh, I'm just finding that like as I've removed all these things, I'm like gravitating to anything that I can use to help balance me or make me feel not as present. Mm. And um, I don't think I've actually realized that until you brought that up. Hmm. So that's interesting because um, it's really tough just being in my own skin, my own body, listening to the world around me, especially while driving. Hmm. Um, because where we live, these drivers are like ridiculous. Ev- evil. Yeah, dude. Like I'm getting tailed everywhere I go. Yeah. And I'm just like, it'd be really easy to drive when you're high. It's easier <laughs> to drive when you're high. <laughs> People are like, you shouldn't drive when you're high. It's like, I'm not. It's just that little bit of extra ump that weed gives you after you smoke is like that buzz is gone. Now that buzz is there. Yeah. So road rage is a potential. It's just crazy mm. how uh, how much different life is when you simplify. So. Yeah, I'm I'm an idiot when it comes to road rage because my thought is I'm just gonna get in front of them and slam on my brakes because if they hit me they have to pay me. Mm. And it's like, oh, what if oh, the, what geez, if they yeah, don't slow not... down and they kill you? It's like ah, I don't care because I'm gonna die for the cause. Yeah. I don't really think it through. I'm just like, this person's a jerk. Yeah, yeah. and it's like, wow, that's so dangerous. What's wrong with me? Yeah, it's someone's tailing and you're like, you know, I'll teach them a lesson. Brake check. <laughs> <laughs> they go back like 20 feet and they're crying. And you're like, well, I don't know who learned anything there. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's, I guess, my update for the headspace. I am, 
I'm, I, um, I want to say that I feel good. It just goes in waves. And so last week was a good week. Um, some days are tougher than others. I'm reading a lot. Um, I'm meditating and I'm doing yoga. I'm gardening. I'm working out. And I'm having some tough times in my relationships mm. with my partner and uh, my own family. Mm. Not you, but our parents. And uh, these are the relationships that matter most to me. And yeah. so the things that matter most to me, I tend to lash out at. And if I'm not, if I'm not realizing that that's potential. So one of the things you said before this cast was like to set boundaries with myself to be like, when you know that you're like, you, you, you know that you're not going to be able to handle this as well, maybe in that moment, because you're not using your medicine or you're just in a different place, then take 10 minutes and don't deal with it right away. And then go back and do it again. And that was like such a simple best encouragement, man, because that is my life is wanting to deal with things immediately so I don't have to wait. Mm. And so if I have a feeling and I want to tell Megan, it's like, I need to tell you right now. And I've practiced so well to not do that. But now that I'm like very conscious and like aware of my body, it's like, oh, no, no, I don't feel good. So I have to tell you this right now. Mm. And so I have to like, it's a simple practice of being like, the moment I ever feel that, oh, I'm going to take 10 minutes. Mm. Because that's like the reactive emotional jump. That's the fear. That's like the insecurity. And so that's what I'm practicing this week Mm. is going to take, you know, not all the time because I got to say things. I got to get shit done. But it's like take the time that I need as much as I can to like take a step back and do that that thing where you go, what is really going on here? Like, what am I really doing right now? Who who am I in this moment? And then moving forward with that question, like answering that in my in my motions and well and also just being vulnerable with what you can handle and i think that's really tough to be like actually i'm i'm not in a place to handle these emotions right now give me 10 minutes to go yell at a wall and then i'm going to come back yeah. and i'm going to handle them I like sometimes like, that's what i need personally yeah, like yeah, to get I, away and then to come back and i have the punching bag up you know and like it, you know boxing really does oh i love boxing man. boxing really helps get some energy out mm-hmm. um it's a great workout too yeah and uh yeah, and so like I, I get a little, I feel a little guilty sometimes, letting because I um, I do have issues with rage and anger, and so like the thought of uh, putting that, even if it's positive, even if you like put that energy into something else, that's like okay, like a punching bag. Sometimes even me feeling that energy at all, it makes me feel uncomfortable because I'm practicing so much for me to not rage, to not rev up at all. Rather like even getting a really good workout where in the past it was like, ah, you're going to kill this bike, kill it. Ah! Like yeah. that idea is like, now it's like, this is tough. Mm. Don't stop. Mm-hmm. Breathe. It's like a different, it's just a different headspace of being like less rage and more soft. And so uh, I you know, had some rage this week, weekend, not like anger, just more of feeling that burning inside of me. Where it was just like, <laughs> I'm going to put this cup down here. I'm just going to slam this door. I'm just going to, yeah. Like that motion is just like, oh God, that's been my whole life. Yeah. And so now I'm just practicing taking those every time, whether it's by myself, stub my toe, you know, I go outside and accidentally step on a bush. Instantly it's like, <laughs> like that's just yeah. more now that, that like, feeling is more and so i have to uh be conscious that that's like a reality of setting back mm-hmm. or like this it's always there now i don't have the medicine that also helped keep it at bay yeah and so um i'm excited i'm excited i, I don't think i'm going to be going back to cannabis anytime soon mm. because of how hard this has been for me mm. and we've talked so positively about it and so if you're made it to this point and you're watching um this is just my experience. This mm. is something I'm choosing to do. If you use plant medicine and it helps, and then you kind of use more other types of plant medicine that require you to stop all the plant medicine, then like there's purpose for why I'm doing this. Mm. And I have been wanting to take control over my weed consumption. And I had no idea that this was going to be the way that I was going to do it. Yeah. And so I'm really happy about that. Yeah. I'm like proud of myself, but I'm once again, and we can just cut it here <laughs> that some days I wake up and it's like, I don't want to be <laughs> yeah. alive. Right. It's yeah. like, and it's just like, I'd rather be high. Yeah. And so. But I I've also, I think that might be <clears throat> some trauma uh, because I deal with a very similar thing, mm-hmm. very similar thoughts um, that me. you have dealt with those thoughts in your life differently. And I've dealt with them differently. And mine have always triggered towards anxiety yeah. and yours have triggered towards fighting. 
yeah. and fighting life, fighting school, fighting everything. Just like fight, 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 fight. Get the problem done now. Get the problem done now where mine has been retreat. Um, but that feeling, I wonder if it's more related towards how we were raised on uh, purpose and sometimes this unconscious feeling of like anger and for no reason, and, like the world's against me. I've been trying to figure out what that is. What is that feeling? I think uh, that couldn't have been a, a better, more beautiful yeah. segue, baby. Yeah, that's what I was working on. Um, and we got about, you know, I'd say 15, 20 minutes before we jump into our game cam. Mm-hmm. And so the main topic, and I think I think we're talking about the topic right now, yeah. but uh, something that's come up in both of our lives and something that's come up a lot in our lives throughout our life has been um, victimization. Mm-hmm. And so today, uh, in terms of religious trauma, I don't like so much what we talk about doesn't just have to deal with religious trauma. It crosses all levels. But um, yeah, we've been talking a lot about how being a victim shows up in our lives and how we even if it doesn't show on the outside, on the inside, the way we can feel about the world. Um, and you just asked me a bunch of questions. Mm. And so I'm going to go ahead and switch the um, energy to you. And I'm gonna, just going to ask you, um, how is it in this, in your own personal experience in your life day to day or what you're dealing with right now in your life? How are some areas in this country or being an American that you're dealing with where you feel like the world's against you? Or the country is like not here to help you, mm. or you're a victim to something, mm. right? Because what you just said was, you know, maybe our upbringing. That is still another right yeah. way to be like, I'm a victim of the way I was raised. Yeah. How has this country or this time in your life? How do you feel like a victim? Well, I feel like a victim in everything. Okay. <laughs> um, and that's why I'm saying I think it relates back to being a victim as a Christian, because mm. since I was a baby, man. Uh, I was told you're going to be, um, what's the word they would use where it's like ostracized against, but like people hate Christians and you're going to be hated and no one's going to believe, you know, the truth, but you know, the truth and you fight it and you're always gonna be a victim. Whereas now that I've walked away from the faith, I feel like everyone's a Christian. And it really was a lie Mm -hmm. that there's no victimization against Christians really. And actually they run the politics and they run the game. And we, it was just a lie, dude. It, that's the way I look at it. But I felt like a victim, especially once <clears throat> I started going to school and being around people that weren't Christians. I felt like they were victimizing me for being too nice, being too, too like Christian. Like every, every, everything you experience, you, you would feel like it was because you were the Christian and people didn't exactly. accept you or people are going to judge you. And yeah. so you have I to always, stand your ground. Exactly. And so not being that, I'm wondering if that really has influenced how I, I feel like a victim in everything. Mm-hmm. Because <clears throat> what you were asking is how do you feel like a victim from the world? And it's like, I feel like a victim of everything because Right, like just this past week. I've yeah, done, give me an example. I've been dealing with some serious back problems. I hurt my back at work. Yes, you have. You know all about this. You've been helping me with my physical therapy and everything. Yeah. Uh, but it, and this is a big shout out to our cousin, Jackie, yes. who is a uh, doctor of physical therapy in Virginia. And bless you. Yeah, she's we've been, been Zooming her. She's been doing Zoom physical therapy but with us. The reason why I've been Zooming her is because I don't have the best health insurance. Mm. And the reason why I don't have the best, best health insurance is because I really don't agree with America's health insurance mm. and that you pay a huge amount of money every month and then you pay when you go to the doctor and then you pay more. It's like, yes, if I pay $900 a month, legit, which some of these health insurance, most of these health insurance cost pretty hefty amounts. I shouldn't pay a dime when I go see a doctor or do anything because I'm paying that much a month. Some countries are like that. I know. And so I have a, lot a, of countries I have like a tough time feeling, not feeling victimized in my situation of I can't afford health insurance and I can't afford to really go to a doctor. And then- it's choosing, well, do you care about your health? Then go in debt if you care about your health. And it's like, it's just like, if I feel like a victim, yeah. but I'm really not. It's just the system's tough, but I do feel like it's against me. And that's mm-hmm. just one aspect. Same thing with rent, same thing with being in the working class. It, it just, it's easy to think it's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. Yeah. Um, when everyone's in that position besides the 1% and besides right. the people that have the money for the most part, but a lot of the country doesn't. Right. And a lot of the country suffers the same way. And so it feels like it's against me. It's me. And it's like, no, it's against actually this collective majority of the population. And it's not just about you. And mm. so that victim mentality, I think first presented itself to me with Christianity as being a Christian. You're just told you're going to be hated on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's 
that's what I want to focus on. Mm. Like asking more about that right there, the foundation of maybe like what you have, are learning or want to learn more of maybe where that stems from. Mm-hmm. But everything you just said there about health insurance <laughs> and about this country is true. Yeah. Right. So the hard thing about this situation is like, it is not easy to be a bartender Mm-hmm. who isn't provided benefits at their job, who has to find covered California or Medi-Cal. Or, right? or like I am provided benefits that are pretty poor. So if I do go to the doctor, it's like, well, you're going to pay everything until $6,800. Right, right. It's like, cool, then I don't want to pay for anything. Yeah, the deductible is like going to put so you in the I, hole. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, cool, then I don't have health insurance. And then it's just, it, it's an endless cycle of, do you want to pay $900 a month for emergencies? Right. So you're in a position that a lot of Americans are in. Yeah. And- I think that that's important to be like, yeah, that's, 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 that's not fair. Mm-hmm. So we know it's not fair. So then you ask yourself, is it better to be like, life isn't fair. So, or is it like, life isn't ever fair, right? Life isn't ever fair. Yeah. And because it, 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 that really is, that's, that's kind of what I'm more I'm leaning on because once I do get out of this part of my life, because everything's temporary, but once I do get to a place where I'm more financially stable, where I have more, where I am more a part of society, I have health insurance, I can afford it. I'm going to be so mad at how much I'm paying in taxes the same way I am right now. Mm. And if I start making millions of dollars someday, I'm going to be just as a victim. I could look at it as, as the systems against the rich and blah, 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 all these things. It's like, you can always look at it that way. Mm-hmm. All the wealthiest people in America hate the tax system. And they're like, I moved to Texas because like California when tax is too much. It's like, you're a victim, right. but you're a multimillionaire. It's not like those taxes help, uh, you know, the lower class. They don't. <laughs> oh, they don't? <laughs> I mean, until there's a stimulus in place, I don't think they're helping anybody. I think there's a lot of people that get health insurance that have nothing. Oh, right? for like, sure. For instance, the homeless. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. homeless comes into the ER because there's very little support for the homeless community. Mm-hmm. And so, they go in for emergency services, you know. And it's who we pay for that through our taxes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the rich find ways to not pay any taxes. Yeah. That's where it gets really hard pill to swallow. Yeah. Like no pun intended. Yeah. The most expensive pill to swallow is realizing that most rich don't pay for taxes. Mm -hmm. Or at least loopholes in this country. Um, And so it's very easy to get angry and be like, see, even the rich, because I have to do it all. And so um, how do you feel? I know you brought it up a couple of times, but. Uh, without maybe uh, however you want to say it, like how has growing up in the church um, in this religious trauma that we have that you are, we are really working to not identify with, mm-hmm. but to like rise above and talk about and educate and like learn more about ourselves. How does this religious, would you call that like victimization part of this religious trauma? Do you think it's part of the religious trauma being a victim or do you think it's just the like culprit of being raised for birth in the church in a family that were victims of yeah. the world yeah. because of their Christian beliefs. I think it'd be both. It's tough. We talk about this constantly on the podcast. It's tough to separate parental trauma, family trauma from religious trauma when your life is the church with your family. Like they intertwine so deeply, but this victimization, I feel like it was from being a Christian, um, especially as a pastor's kid, but mainly just being Christian you are taught that you're going to be hated on. And sometimes you were, but really you're not in comparison to other people who are hated on or are, are like victims. It was like weird looks. Yeah. Like, like you're worshiping in a park. It's like, yep, yeah. that's it. That's the people think it's weird. And that's all be, it is. And it'd be like, Hey, do you want a free burger? Yeah. Can I tell you about the, I can't tell you. We'll have a free burger. Have a free burger. Yeah. See, they hate us. It's like, no, they don't. They just, so let me ask you a yeah. question. How many times mm-hmm. do you remember being told uh, that your job was to go out into the world that hated you. Like how often was that like, Hey, you know, when, you know, when you're going out there today or like being out in the world, you know, it's going to probably feel like people are really, you know, hating on you. Like how often was that? How much did you feel that was your life? Was that all of your life growing up? Was that the going into the world meant like I'm a Christian and nobody else is. And so I have to be prepared to be, you know, hated or whatever. Uh, I mean, most times, um, at least with missionary work, uh, when you're preaching the gospel. Like going to school. Go, I mean, going to school, no one was a Christian in my eyes. And then when I would find out that they did go to church, I'd be like, dude, you're the, you, you are sinning 
every second of your life. And it's hard to think of you as a Christian and just judge. But just like, judge. You're victiming, but, judging. But, if, I, but I feel like a victim for being the real true Christian. And I felt like a lot of times growing up, especially in my younger times, going to public school, kids would find it so weird that I would like – help the kids that didn't have friends. I'd go sit at lunch with people that didn't have friends because that's what I was told to do is always do what Jesus would do and find like, like you're the victim. So go find the people that are also victims and Mm -hmm. help them. And uh, it's beautiful in some ways because you are being a friend to people that maybe need it more than others. But in reality, I felt just victimized with them. And um, especially going to school, I started to feel like a victim. Um, from just what I was told, man. Uh, I didn't start school, public school until fifth grade. And so coming out of legit, only knowing the church and nothing and then going to public school, it was, I'm a victim because all I know is Jesus. Mm. And it kind of, at sometimes I kind of was a victim um, in certain circumstances, but that's just being a kid and people bullying you and not knowing what they're doing. But in reality, I wasn't. And <laughs> I could have let go of it at any time. And it's like, I'm not really a victim. Yeah. Um, at least not as, I feel more of a victim in reality. I feel more of a victim and more of a reason to be a victim in society, in American society, than I ever did as a Christian mm. with looking back on it. But I was told multiple times that you will be hated on. People hate you as a Christian. It's your job to turn the other cheek, you know? Does your partner or anybody, I mean, I know you and I talk all the time, but like, does anybody ever call you out that you're being a victim? Like, I think it sounds like you're just being a victim right now about this. Did people ever say that to you? I mean, you are uh, <laughs> recently quite a bit. But not like that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, we, we have really good talks about maybe like what's happening. But because to me, that's like when, when anybody says that to me, you're just being a victim. It's such a trigger. It is. Because it's like, you want to see me be a victim now? <laughs> I'll show you what it makes. You're making me feel like one. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and uh, uh but it's a tough thing to talk when when you are quote unquote the victim of something and someone says, I think you're just being the, the victim here. You're actually not, mm-hmm. you're just going through something tough. That also is like, you either swallow that and accept it. And you're like, damn, because it's a character thing, right? It's, it's like, also it's a character ch- flaw. It's also a choice. It's a to choice. To be the victim in any circumstance is you are choosing to be the victim. How are you in your life with these things? It can be with me or family mm-hmm. or whatever we've done, but like, how are you handling this? Like, how are you starting to work towards like seeing this more, the victimization of being alive? Uh, microdosing has helped quite a bit. Mm, here we go with plant medicine yeah. again. Um, I've been microdosing psilocybin for over like eight months now. So what is what exactly has it, how have you noticed? How is it? Was um, it you just start to, over a long period of time, start to think of why you think certain things. Mm. Why do why am I a victim? Start questioning. Yeah. I started questioning myself. Like, I don't know everything. Instead maybe. of questioning the world, I question, wait, I only think this way because this is what I've been told. What's the truth? And it's the same thing as like unraveling all this religious trauma is we're trying to figure it out ourselves and also ask questions to ourselves and our ego and Love then pull that. that away. Asking yourself questions. Yeah. Like, why am I being a victim with this? Yeah. You know, Zachary, why am I being, Nathan, why am I, you know, it's good. When I feel anxious i'm asking myself well let's actually figure out what i'm anxious about and if it's about being anxious that's like the most anxious right. thing for me is because like I don't know, and you start to get in this tunnel but it's, it's when you're microdosing for me at least it makes you want to challenge y- your beliefs and just challenge what is making your life more difficult when it doesn't have to be yeah and i like you know the last when i'm like hearing you talk about micro because microdosing is such a um a slow build, right? It's like you're, it's like accumulating over time, yeah. you know, in a lower amount. Whereas like my last real psilocybin experience, I was thinking a lot about after we hung out, we were talking about health insurance and we were getting mm-hmm. Jackie with physical therapy on board. And um, we talked about this a lot about the victimization and how, yeah, you are kind of a victim to the system, but you don't want to be a victim to the system. Yeah. Um, and the last time I had, when I was talking to that tree and you can go back and watch my explanation or whatever, my story, but, um, was that voice was like, get up and walk. And when I walked the entire time was feeling the flowers on my f- ankles and the grass. And then I would get down and I look at a flower and it was like, what I realized after all of it was done, I felt this in the moment, but afterwards it was being aware that all I was doing was being aware. Mm. That's it. 
There was no thoughts. There was no contemplation. There was no questioning. I guess there were questions, but it wasn't like answers. There was no defining anything. It was just, there is a flower, so I want to see it closer. Mm. How is this flower alive? The sun. There's the sun. Get up and walk. Mm. It was just like awareness. And that piece of just being present and aware to like receive everything rather than give out an explanation was powerful. So I think that's probably something there is that the more and more you have microdosed or you started over time, it's like this, you've started just to aware, be more aware of mm. everything, you, your partner, your life. And that awareness over time is like, why am I this way then? Because I'm just, when I'm more aware, I'm less rumination or mm -hmm. I'm less contemplating all these things. I'm less questioning. I'm less blaming. Mm -hmm. And I think that like, there's a secret there. There's a secret to this idea of like, the lie is be present all mm -hmm. the time. Just be present, be in the moment. I really do think that I've been living that. And I think that's a little bit of a lie because it's, that's, your memory mm -hmm. is one of the, like, the greatest computers we've ever known ever. The ability for you to go back to your childhood and have trauma mm -hmm. is insane. Mm -hmm. So, we like, just be in the moment. It's like, what? Mm. I can't. Like, I'm supposed to have memories, which are, like, building on one another to, yeah. like, create this character and this entire experience, this human experience. We're limited by time and space, but our internal side, endless possibilities mm. of time and space, right? <laughs> controlling that inner dialogue or not controlling it, but allowing it to be smoother and like guide us is something that I'm practicing. Mm. It's like hard to just be aware when there's trauma. It's really hard to just be aware of life when you've been a victim as a kid or in your family, right? Yeah. Like growing up, like you've been told these, this is how the world is. When anybody tells you how the world is, it limits that child's ability to maybe grow up to just be aware of the world around them and ask questions. Well, and that's also just one person's awareness. If one person's like, this is how the world is, it's like, that's just from your life. There's so many lives out here. But wouldn't you say that that person that tells you how life is, is who can ever tell you what life is? Exactly. You're the only person that can tell you yourself what life is. And even you can't say that. You can just be aware of it. And that's also like another thing I think microdosing is, is it shows you that, that everything is a choice. Everything is a choice. For me, I feel like I have to be at this job. I have to live in California. I have to pay this rent. I have to get health benefits. Like you actually really don't. You're still choosing to do that. Mm -hmm. you, you could leave. You could go live in the forest on a commune and be happy if that's what's going to make you happy. You could choose your happiness. And I've been trying to figure out what my Would happiness is. Would that make you is. happy living on a, in the forest? I think, man, getting out of the constraints of having to figure things out where it's at some point I have to have this much money. At some point I have to have kids. At some point I have to do this. At some point I have to have this figured out just to take all that away and be like, actually, all you have to do is live. How do you get there? Um, We're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> Uh, but I, I, I am much more open to the idea that all of what I've defined as what will make me happy just might not be what is going to make me happy. Mm. And that I need to... Damn, dude. I need to find it myself. Because in reality, the only reason why I, I think what's going to make me happy is going to make me happy is because of all the experiences I've had. And looking back at all the trauma I've had has defined that. And I don't know if I want to live my life based on the trauma I had. I think I want to live my life based on what... I need my life to be. I want my life to be. Wow. You, you're speaking it into existence on this podcast, which Hell goes yeah. up on places like YouTube and <laughs> iTunes and lasts forever. <laughs> Does. And so um, that's powerful. I, 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 I'm just now starting to realize that maybe what makes me happy isn't what I was told, but what I want mm. or what I need, you know, and like, Maybe what we want isn't always what we need. Mm. So what we need sometimes definitely doesn't make us happy, which is the classic life is joy and suffering. Mm. Suffering is a part of life. And it's part of joy. Joy and suffering go hand in hand. Yeah. They're not one and the same, but they definitely complement each other very well. Yeah. You know? Everything good is followed by suffering or is you suffer to get to the good. You climb a huge mountain, 
there's points of that climb that are just not fun and you actually can hurt yourself, yeah. which can cause even more problems down the line, but whatever. But when you get to the top, it's a whole different, yeah. whole different ball game and it's a whole different amount of joy. There, you know, I, I try to be careful to speak on this sort of like the Joe Rogan type of dialogue. That's like, you have to suffer, you know, suffer, 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 you know, got to push yourself through the mud. Well, it, know, also, like, it also gives like the, the ability to just, uh, promote oppression. Right. Like you have to be oppressed to be happy. It's like, no, that's not true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you, what we're you don't have to about. put yourself in pain. To no, be happy. you don't. Not at all. Um, but I like love that example of the hike, you know, like hiking up a really huge mountain to get to a view to have an awareness of perspective that's higher up to, to see just how small everything truly is, mm. how big this world is, is like, it might take a, a lot of suffering to get there to be able to have that perspective. Mm. And I do actually subscribe to that logic. And I live that way in my life. Like gardening is high amount of suffering mm. for a huge amount of like joy. Yeah. You know, and uh, riding the bike for an hour is a huge amount of suffering mm. for an immense amount of not even just joy, but just peace after. And health. Health. And, health and with joy. health, vitality, yeah. life. I don't know if I'm going to get hit by a car tomorrow or the day after, but right now I know that putting myself in suffering by choice is gives me this sort of strength to have like a lot of personal success and internal joy mm -hmm. after. But we have no control in this life. And so suffering can creep up all the time or every so often and surprise us with the practice of being present in that like, this is a part of what it means. You can go online at any any part of the day and learn more suffering of people um being aware of that that you're just not it's not just you it's not just me in this world realizing that you're just one piece of the eight billion people that are here right now eight billion plus of the 80 billion people that mm. have lived ever and then 140 billion that will probably live more after us until the world burns up is we're tiny, <laughs> and so every time we're victims the little tiny thing it means the sun revolves around us and it's just not true we revolve around the sun that's why i'm practicing this sort of or learning so much of what this light means and this light inside of me mm. that i can choose to like put a hand over it or you know like cover it if i will or choose to let it shine yeah and in suffering it can shine mm -hmm. and in joy it can shine and it can always shine mm-hmm um, it would be foolish to say that it don't that life don't hurt, mm. but um, becoming less of a victim by what you said by being like I am choosing to to realize that what makes me happy isn't what I was told, but what maybe what I need and want. These ideas is where that light shines, even if you don't feel great. Mm -hmm. You start to see it and feel it, and even in yourself and people, it radiates to others. Um, it's the worst. It's just not easy. Yeah, it's might be one of the hard it's like reformatting but any reformatting even a hard drive takes some work you might need to buy a new hard drive <laughs> yeah. which i don't know how that <laughs> maybe you have to go on some retreat which is going to change your hard drive maybe you have to sometimes <laughs> quit everything like right now i feel like i am a, i have been a victim without weed which is, is interesting it's how much it's more of a victim interesting I how um we were raised so ritualistic and what you're doing is very ritualistic right True. now. Um, and Which is why, dude, I feel like, I mean, I'm reading a book by, uh, it's called Inner Engineering, um, Sad, Sadhuru, or Sadhuru, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher his name, but um, I'm opening my life to more uh, different, different ritualistic practices like mm -hmm. yoga and meditation that are very ritualistic or feel that way. Yeah. And if there's one thing that you and I, I don't know as much as you feel this, but I feel like I got really lucky by being born in a family, in a place where I practice meditation. We talked about this, like through prayer, prayer and yeah. other things at such a young age that I'm like way on board to sit for an hour and breathe. Really, I'm only getting like five, 10 minutes, but we'll get there. But you know, like it's, it's like, I feel like I was born in this. Mm. Like, oh, this is familiar. So it's scary because I have trauma, but I don't want to be defined by my trauma anymore because yeah. there's this whole world that have been meditating and praying and, and all these different ways that are like highly enlightening mm. and full of light and joy and tons of suffering to learn. I don't want to like be afraid to engage in these quote unquote rituals or these meditative practices that remind me of my past. It's almost like I want to remember that my past maybe 
not that it's maybe it's meant to be. Maybe there's a structure to all of this. Feels that way. But I think spirituality is a real thing. Totally. And, and we were raised very spiritual. And I think of prayer as spiritual. It's, all, I, oh, yeah. it, it's meditative as well. I think of reading the Bible. And, I think and, you're more spiritual than you are biological, baby. And there you go. I think it's like— But I think, I think the trauma that we're talking about is the religion. And if religion does anything, it, it puts a stamp on it and makes it oppressive. And, you, and it makes it controlling. Yeah. And it makes it this thing where it's like, that's no longer spiritual. That's controlling and oppressive. And— and it puts things into law that are oppressive. Mm. And so I think of meditating as spiritual. I think of yoga as spiritual. And you should, because a lot of people think of it as like a body workout, get, lose weight, but it is. Yeah, it's, but it's, why it's enlightenment. Why, it's about reaching it, a higher place of it. It's about yeah. connecting yourself to the universe, these exactly. positions, these body moves, the deep separating breathing. Separating yourself from social media, separating yourself from visual stimuli that you even said in the beginning of this cast, that is, you didn't realize how much it was like Oh yeah, I cracked co- yesterday. Covering up your anxiety, covering up your, your crutches and all those things just by being distracted. Distractions are huge. Take those distractions away for one hour a day. The it, Just that alone. Meditate for one hour a day insane yeah, it's, it's insane it's try insane. it it's insane we'll try five minutes exactly try 10 you're at you're at 10 that's great man when i was meditating like reg, like on a ritual basis when i was going through like a big anxiety thing when i was like 22 23 um it took about i want to say three months to get comfortable sitting for 10 minutes yeah and meditating yeah it's a big deal it's it's tough and so you hear about people that can do it for an hour and i'm like wow good for you I mean, you hear if he's, yeah, you hear these stories of people sitting still and not moving for thirty days, yeah, because they're not there. Because yeah. I, 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 it's like the thing about Christianity and these religions is they're tiptoeing into areas that are very real. Yeah, that's and, why they work. And I feel like they're extremely manipulative, but they are tiptoeing into some real spirituality, and it's it's very real singing and prayer and you're breathing so much and there's such, you know, like collect groups together all doing the same song Yeah, is a very common practice that works, you know? So like, um, well, and creates an energy. You want to know what I was going to say, because we're at the mark here is, Mm. uh, we're going to do this five of these. Ready? We're going to say the trauma will not define us. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. The The trauma trauma will will not define us. The The trauma trauma will will not define define us. The trauma will will not define us. us. The trauma will not define us. Chantel, one more time. The trauma will not define us. Thank you. Yes. Um, Now, that felt like church. Exactly. That's how I wanted to do it. (laughs) I wanted to do something a little bit like, but it's true. Mm -hmm. When that trauma doesn't define us, the rituals that we're raised in, we're not victims of them, man. Exactly. They are we were actually pretty lucky to have an open door of knowing what that was like. And we can like maybe use that, or I know we can use that for an extreme amount of like beneficial, like benefits and success. We are. Yeah. Why do you think we strive so much for spirituality and other things? We use plant medicine, but also yoga and meditation and and really trying to conjure this beauty in this life, I think is because we were raised with the idea that we were doing it through Christianity, doing it through Calvary Chapel Christianity and for Jesus. When in reality, it's like, I'm God, you're God, she's God. We're all God. We're all part of the same thing. We do it for that. Yeah. You do it for that. Yeah. That's the spirituality we're connecting with. We've put throughout history, we put Christianity on it. We put Catholicism on it. But in reality, it's the same thing. We're all doing the same thing. Just take the oppression out of it. We're all Take of the, the spirit. religion out. We're all of the spirit. It's hard. It's hard to believe that sometimes. It is, especially when I see police. Hundred percent. We're all of the spirit. Yeah. Question. Yeah. I'm still working on it. Yeah, we're working on it. I might always work on it. I think everyone can leave whatever that is, though, is the thing, and that's why it gets confusing, is because not every person really is living their truth. Yeah. And they're lost in the same society that we brought up as being a victim of, and feeling that same way. They feel the same shit too. So, victimization less, mm-hmm. judge less. Mm-hmm. Um, except that being present isn't maybe what it's always meant to be, mm-hmm. that our memories are there for a reason and that to embrace that and accept ourselves for who we are, these, these massive computers that have insane memories and um, splinters of trauma throughout them, that this is what we are. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing. And to not rid out the trauma or to not be more aware of it would be foolish. Mm. 
and but to embrace the reality that like i have been a victim i don't want to be a victim so i act now to fix that or to like conquer that is like says a lot about your character mm. um and i'm right there with you bro totally so, more power to you more power to us to us um i was gonna say i am but really it's we are mm -hmm. so we do yeah So, um, how are we doing over there, Chantel? I'm doing good. Yeah? Tell us about it. What are we working on? Can you hear me? No, we can't, actually. I asked her, <laughs> I asked her a question. She doesn't have a mic, so. Why don't you give us a little rundown, a paragraph, maybe on, uh, yeah, you, yeah, she's talking right now. You, you probably, probably know what she's talking about. You probably can't notice it, but whenever we clap, it's because we're setting up the game cam, and so it's, it takes a little bit to come back to to scene here but uh chantelle's been working on a bunch of merch and she's come up with a bunch of ideas but one of the main things we wanted to say is that go ahead and announce it we are very happy here on those boys podcast to announce that chantelle bogue is engaged Ooh, look at that ring diamonds and emeralds shining bright like a diamond shining bright like a diamond, diamond. Chantel bright like a diamond. Yes, congratulations, Chantel. Hey. Honestly, we're very happy. Amazing. Um, uh, what about you, Zach? When are you going to get engaged? Just kidding. It's and not about your hands, about you. Me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hashtag me too. <laughs> Hashtag me too. That's what that means, right? Yeah, that ring. <laughs> um, let's go on that? over. That's a that's a beautiful thing, Chantel. I'm so happy to engage people in the house. Yeah, it's about time that we go on over to, you know it, folks. You've been watching us for 36 You've episodes. You've been watching. It is. Time. Game Cam. Game Cam. Game Cam. Game Cam. Welcome to Those Boys Game Cam, where we play Mario Kart 64. Well, that's what we're playing right now. We can actually play anything If you want. were watching recently, you've known that I smashed Zach in Mario Kart 150cc. Yeah, he did. Um, the last week was Rainbow Road, and that was just massive. Dude. It went on such a big note. I think Zach got... I got last, dude. You got last. I yeah. got one point. Um, one point. We're, yeah. I mean, one point. One, one, yeah, I did not do well. It was tough. And it you was were blaming really the controller. But we actually have the controllers now where they're not so skinny. And uh, we are actually going to be doing battle. We have a few more um, uh, maps on the battle because we only played. Um, yeah, because the last one we played was super fast. What? And uh, I guess we'll, we'll play Mario Kart three more weeks, right? This week and two more because we have yeah, three we have more maps. Battles. We'll give Block Fort what Block Fort was, which was you, you on that. I think I was DK last time. DK is such a good battle. You know, he's a good battle. He's so we did player. Block Fort. And tonight, let's do. Uh, do you want to do Big Donut or Double Deck? Let's do Double Deck. Let's do Double Deck. Or Best baby. out of three. Zach, are you ready? I am ready, Daddy. Okay, here we go. We got bigger controllers, baby. Hey, Nate, I'm just going to conjure this. I'm going to smash you so, so hard, dude. I'm I hope just so. going to smash you, dude. Coming for you right from the start. Oh, snap. I'm out of here. Bye. Oh, I just screwed that up. I screwed the pooch on that one. I can't even drive. Well, we have the same exact setup right now. Woohoo! Oh, no! Oh, God. Yes! I knew it. I That's knew. one. I, I panicked, dude. Where are you, baby? Come get me! Yeah! Oh, how do you? Why are we? Why are we getting the same exact stuff? This is kind of weird. Coming for you, baby. Actually, you know what? You're just gonna wait until my star runs out. Oh! Oh no! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no! You got hit too. So many green. <laughs> nope. Oh. Ah, you just wasted your. You could have easily beat me right there, dude. Dude, yeah, I panicked. I panicked and used it right away. But I'm coming right up on you right now. Nah, you're not. Uh, Man, why are you getting, getting this, these red shells, I dude? I keep getting the same items. I mean, the red shells are clutch. Don't worry, I just got green shells. You're not going to kill me with that red shell. I remember when I was younger and I would go down to the bottom floor and I used to think I was safer down here because I'd be like, no one comes down to the bottom level. Really? Oh, <gasps> yes! No. Game one. Nay, nay. Dang, dude. Got you down to one balloon, though. What did you say at the beginning of this? That you were going to what? I'm going to smash you. Here we go again. This first game, dude. Best out of three. So if I win this one. I don't even care. Come dude. on, please win this one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You got that first uh I'm coming for you hit. No, don't you. Oh, you just you know, I wanted to leave that there, so it surprisingly killed you later. Coming for Oh come on, you ghost. 
Wow, you're really invisible right now. Fully invisible. You can't see me. Oh, no. Why did I waste that? Ooh. Ooh Would have hit you. Don't you dare take my bananas. Watch out for the banana mines coming out behind. I think it's funny, like, if you're uh, still listening right now and not watching, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh! Dude, bananas for the win. Um, but you should be on YouTube or something and watching this because it's a lot more exciting because we can't really talk at the same time because it's a hard game. <laughs> well, and there's a lot of pressure on this one match right now. The, the game's been cam, winning a little too much. The game cam has evolved. No! Ah! What a good hit, dude. Great job. That's a, that's a tough thing to do. Oh, shiza. No, no, no. No! Oh, oh and you threw me off, too. Is that going to be 12th balloons? No, you only lost one because you didn't. You fell. You're good. Are you sure? Yeah. You oh, got lucky. Dude, no. This is not looking good. Give me something to protect myself. Oh, my gosh. You got so many green shells. Yeah, come and get me, baby. <gasps> yeah! No, dude, I can't win. I can't beat you in these games. I'm so sorry, man. Dang, man. It's a change. Think about it. I think I'm going to games you won here on the corner of this dude. table playing like board games I don't and other know if things. I remember, but it's only from like episode eight until like 16. I was just killing you. And then you started winning. You got Moncal a couple times and then you kept winning. And then I just haven't been winning. Yeah. You've been winning for week after week after week after week after week. I will, I will, I will, I've told you this, that I started to get <sighs> really upset that how nervous I would get playing like not nervous but just not present because mm. we're like being filmed yeah so every time we played a game I'm like I don't care anymore I want to win yeah now now you're like I care I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you I want to beat you this is such a tough game too man um, that's why I was I can't wait until we're done with this because you always beat me in this game Mario Kart. no matter what uh, what, what are we gonna play next Goldeneye I, I never I mean we'll there's like 300 games on this thing. We could find another yeah. one we played. We pop play Super Smash Bros. and I'll smash you. You will smash me in that game. I already know that. <laughs> that cause, yeah, that's like, that was a hard game for me to play. Yeah. It's like I was never good at that yeah. game. Yeah, um, I, I do have one character that I know how to play in that game. I'm good job. Sorry. Hey, I don't mean to no. smash you again. Don't be zero. Don't be sorry. Um, but let's wrap this up. Yeah. Zach, we have a very important announcement to make to finish off this cast. Indeed. Um, give it to us. Ready? Right when this cast is being released, also my newest song, Hold Up, under the artist name Signs, S-Y-N-Z, will be streaming on all streaming platforms, so do yourself some good due diligence and go listen yeah, to do, do that Yeah, do due diligence song. and go listen to it. No, it's actually one of my favorite releases, at least of this year. I've been releasing a song a month for, this is number four. Um, we had Keep Coming Back, we had Blow My Mind, we had Real One, and now we got Hold Up. Yeah, baby. And uh, I'm very excited about the song, so go this give song, it a listen. I love all your songs, but yeah, this one's my favorite so mm -hmm. far. Which mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, I don't like to have favorites, but you're improving. Like every song's getting, mm -hmm. you know, I like it. Like the last one was like more Drakey vibes, and this one's just like, this is like some Bryson Tiller vibe, baby. Yeah, this is. Da! Da! I've been thinking about you for so damn long. Do you even think about me? Hold on. I've been on this mission. Too I'm gonna remix this one. You should. Yeah. I'll give you the stems. Please. That'd be great. What a oh. great. We should do. That would be a great for you to release another EP where there'd be like the remix on no, your. You should release an EP of like Neo Man or Nene remixing my music. I'm never releasing music. Okay. Just kidding. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna do it. Man. Neo Man's coming back for an album. Nene will do remixes. It's gonna be great. Those boys' game tracks too. Yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. Yep. Congratulations! I can't Thanks, wait for hold up and Chantel. Congratulations again. Thank you for all the hard work. Also, the graphic part of our team. The graphic design was actually a dual uh, teamwork on this one. Uh, really excited about this one. Really fun yeah. graphic design on this one too. So, anyways, any other any other updates? Oh yeah, I think that's something we should talk about is uh, we might be missing our first weekend. We might be. We might be missing uh, we're our first try weekend. Our best to do a couple podcasts at the same time but there might be one weekend that we we yeah. put a pause for the we'll first see. time which at that point if we get to like episode 37 38 and we have one week that we just take a break on and someone gets mad <laughs> you could also you're a victim you know it, it's it's it, at some point there's also going to be somebody else sitting in your chair if you can't make it and somebody else might be saying it might how fun would that be guests yes. you know 
Um, who would I have on the guest? Well, I love you, man. Love and you, I love you, woman. And um, it's I love rap. everyone that's uh, sticking on board with us. And uh, much love. Yeah. Soft love. Especially to everybody. Uh, I ran into our uncle at my work oh, uh, really? about a week ago. And he, I was so busy. And he's like, dude, I just really wanted to sit down and talk to you about your podcast. It's like, I listen no. to every episode. No. I was just like, dude, I look, look I, like in the business, I looked at him, I was like, thank you so much for listening to my podcast. Uh, Uncle Mark. Yeah. We love you, man. So, thank you so much. Uh, I would love to sit down with him and, and talk Deanna, to Deanna, thank you yeah. for watching. Yeah. Jackie Physical Therapy. We'll see you soon on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> um, as I dig my uh, elbow into Zach's left butt cheek. Yeah. <laughs> love, love the family. Love people listening to it. That's uh, it, so folks. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.